What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate reverse rants, no hate. So, you know, I watched the Roy Jones and Anthony Pettis fight, and I'm not here to do a fight breakdown. You know, what I will say as far as the fight goes is Roy Jones was pretty much outboxing Anthony Pettis and pretty much outworking him, and then uh, it's like he faded. You know, he's 54 years old. Anthony Pettis, I think, is 34. And I don't know, but it just looked like Roy Jones, part of me was like, is he trying to lose on purpose? Like, is he that? Like, you accepted the fight. You know, and basically, Roy Jones is having IRS issues, so he needs money. And, you know, Roy Jones himself said, unless he's getting paid millions of dollars, why would he do it? You know, I don't know what happened. He was supposed to fight the, 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 the uh, bodybuilding-looking dude or whatever the hell. He's supposed to fight that guy. I don't know what happened. I really don't care. I think, you know, I mean, this is more respectable you know, at least Anthony Pettis. I know. I don't. I don't know. They said that the guy does kickboxing or whatever. That, that I don't know. That that comedian dude, man. That's what I call him. Guy was always making those silly videos, but just watching it, man, was like, you know, Roy was. Um, you know, it's like I don't know, man. It, it. He doesn't fight like he's trying to really win. He fight like he's just trying to entertain and like just show some flashes of. Hey, Mike's do this, y'all, you know, but he doesn't really like he's trying to really hurt his opponent, trying to really get him out of there. It's like he just, he, it looks like just sparring matches, you know. Um, he lost an eight-round decision, and he was saying, you know, he wanted to do it again, and they was asking him, was he going to, was this it, or was he going to do, like, more exhibitions, and he was saying, he don't do exhibitions. If it's not real, I don't want to do it, and a lot of people took that as he was trying to take a shot at Mayweather. Now, I don't know and I really don't care, but he shouldn't take shots at Mayweather if that is the case. Um, for one, that's just cheesy. And I'm not saying that he was, but a lot of people took it that way because, you know, Roy does exhibitions. If that's not for Roy, then it's not for Roy. But I'm pretty sure he didn't make close to what Mayweather makes in his exhibitions. And, you know, it just made me think, like I've said all the time, I constantly go back to you know, Mayweather as the blueprint of understanding fighters, understanding his business, okay? Because Floyd Mayweather, when he said, I fight for me, these fans, the fans that stand with me, then they always going to get love from me, but these fans, the majority of them, they want to see you lose, and basically they cheer you today, they boo you tomorrow. Tomorrow, you know, day after that, they chant for somebody else. So those fans are not going to feed you later. They're not going to put food on your table. They're not going to put your kids through college. He's 120% right. What do you hear Anthony Joshua saying now? Huh? I fight for me. Because he felt betrayed. He felt let down. How people quickly abandoned him when all of a sudden times get hard. Anthony Joshua's to retire. Oh, he's punched. Oh, he's, he's punched shy. He's scared to fight. He's this, he's this. And it's like, Wow. It's one thing to tell the truth about what you see, and it's another thing to just be downright insulting, right? Many fighters, I can sit here and name, who come to this, I fight for me now. Well, you see the difference? Roy Jones even had the idea of fighting Anderson Silva before Mayweather was considering the whole situation with him and, you know, um, Conor McGregor. But look at the difference, see? Everybody sits there talking about Floyd is having financial troubles. That's why he keep coming back. And uh, but then it's like he's making thirty plus million every time for exhibitions. They hope that he's broke. They hope that he's going through. But you know anybody with some sense can see that's not the case. But you wishing that on somebody. And look, Roy Jones is actually going through this. You think Roy Jones at fifty four wanted to have to come back and fight? But what else is he going to do? Right, commentating is not going to give him that kind of money that he needs or whatever. And I don't know what the dollar amount is. I don't need to know. But just saying, you see, this is part of where now when you look at it, it's like, well, here's a man 54 years old jumping back in the ring because he has IRS deals and he's you know issues. And he said, I'm not really fighting my opponent. I'm fighting the IRS. 
And that's another reason too why I'm saying when you watch him, it's like I guess you can say he did what he did at 54. But my thing was Anthony Pettis is really not even a C class fighter. He's a D. E. You know what I mean? A F. He's not he's not even a C class fighter. He showed Roy Jones a lot of respect at the end of that fight, gave him his props and all, and that's all well and good. But my point, what I'm saying is, if you can't beat Anthony Pettis, then who else are you going to fight? And how long is it going to last? Like, how many people are going to keep paying to watch you come and lose, you know? So, the thing about it is, you see how somebody can go down in history as pound for pound, one of the best who you think that Roy Jones would rather trade places with? You don't you don't think he wish he was in the position that Mayweather's in? You see what I mean about when people start talking and saying a whole lot of other shit. He always said he gave Floyd credit for being the smartest. Roy Jones said that, right? But at the same time, it's like, yeah, even saying that and you arguing about a pound for pound list and who think who was better. But see, this is life after boxing. So how important is it right now? For you to really care if people think Floyd is better than you or not. And that's the point he always argued, right? So you ask yourself this. Would you rather be in a position of I don't people don't think I'm better than Floyd, but I'm set for life. My family set for life. We got life changing money. Or people think you better than Floyd, but you broke. You about to be in the poorhouse. Just saying. That's think about it. So this this boxing game is it's no it's not a game, man. It's not a joke. And this is where I'm looking at, like, I always say fighters should, you know, get be properly compensated and you should always go out there and get your money. But like we like we know, they focus on the money to the point where it's all about the money. They don't care about legacy. We know Roy Jones cared about both, but it goes to show you what I'm saying. See, you're saying that a guy can't read and write because 50 Cent says so. That Oscar De La Hoya and all these other people that try to say you know, things about Floyd hoping that he's on his hands and knees crawling, needing handouts. But now, here comes another all-time great who's really going through financial issues. You know, we heard Roy Jones clearly shoot down any, you know, talk about him coming back to boxing. And now, guess what? He's back. And even to say, I'm not doing this if big exhibitions. If it's not real, I don't want to do it. Well, if this wasn't an exhibition, which it was, it was an eight-round fight, they had no head guards and also, yeah, okay, well, you have another loss on your record. Yeah, it came at 54 years old. But it's just the point of what I'm saying. It's like, it's sad to know. There's a difference when you come back because you still have a passion for it versus I'm coming back because I have to because this is the only way I know to scrape up enough money to get me out of debt or whatever I'm dealing with financially. So, man, when I when I was watching it, it was just like, damn, watching Roy all fat now and slow and just, it was like, wow, man. And I'm watching him and it's just like, you know, just knowing what he used to be and seeing him right now. That kind of stuff is hard to watch, you know. So people are so caught up into this YouTube boxing stuff and all, you know, they, they, they don't really think about the severity of like what's actually happening. And here comes an all-time great. You mean to tell me the powers that be in boxing can't do something to help Roy Jones out? You know, I don't know how smart he was with his money. That's not my business. I don't know what type of decisions he made in life with his money and all. But just saying, it it, it it's it's it, it amazes me how people are quick to want to compare fighters and talk about who was what and what they meant to the sport. So I always feel like, well, if they meant so much to the sport, help them. I mean, it's not like I can see if he had a gambling problem or he was just a person just, you know, doing things over and over, not learning his lesson. Like, I don't know his situation, but I'm just saying, you got to admit, Floyd Mayweather was right. Floyd Mayweather was right. And he also said, you see guys coming back way past their primes, trying to convince the world they better or just still as good as they always was. I'm doing exhibitions. I'm retired from boxing. I'm doing exhibitions and people constantly would make all types of stupid remarks about Floyd and what he's doing oh he's broke and, and 50 Cent said and Oscar De how the fuck with 50 Cent or Oscar De La Hoya know he don't even ride with 50 Cent anymore him and Oscar De La Hoya are not friends they don't keep in touch how the hell would, would they know what's in that man's bank account but at the end of the day just saying 
Yeah, man. You know, like I said, I'm not here to do no fight breakdown. I, that, that shit was hard to watch, man. And 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 I'm like, damn, Roy, if you can't beat Anthony Pettis, who the, I mean, who else are you going to fight? Who who's even going to care, man? And looking at him fighting that little dusty, half-empty building, it just, it just it was just like, uh, damn, Roy Jones, man. This is Roy Jones Jr., man. This is Roy Jones. You know, I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but it, I mean. I watched it the one time, man. It's just like, I I, I don't even want to see it again, man. You know, and I'm not going to sit here and say what he should retire, what he should or shouldn't do. That's that man's life. But it's like, realistically, if you can't win, the check's going to get smaller and smaller, and it's not going to be a demand to get you back in there. You know, and, and, and I mean, to see the way he looks, his body obviously can't sustain, he can't sustain the type of, energy and and, and 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 output that he need to get you know in the you know in, in shape where it looks like he's in shape even you know he looked like okay he ready to do something man he's fat man he's slow his his ah yeah yeah and because of Pettis being such a a, a a novice fighter you know is the reason why you know, Roy was able to even do what he was doing against him. And you don't want to see Roy trying to fight anybody in their prime. Of course not. But I'm just saying, who else is it for Roy Jones to fight that people are going to actually care to see him, you know, fight against? If he would have won, that would have been different. Then it's like, okay, of course he's not the same fighter. We get that. But, you know, losing the Pettis, I don't think anybody really thought he was. And it makes you think, maybe that bodybuilding dude might have knocked Roy Jones out of something. Who knows? I don't know why the fight was canceled. Why was a different opponent instead of him? I don't know. But, I mean, damn. Yeah, man. It, it was just hard to watch. It was like watching, yeah, when I saw Pernell Whitaker fighting on Tuesday night fights against the Pink Panther. You know, seeing Meldrick Taylor coming back fighting in a damn high school gym. Like, it, 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 it was just like, uh... Anyway, anybody who's been watching Roy and understand, you know where I'm coming from. Talk to me in the comment section, y'all. What y'all think about Roy Jones' situation, if y'all saw that fight or not, man. And just, you know, looking at how great boxers end up. And they're human beings. I don't care. It's not about the celebrity status and all this greatest of all time is talking. It's just the fact that this is another human being who gave his life to a sport, dedicated his time, his blood, sweat, and tears. And now he's in the position that he's in. But again, Mayweather keep talking to you guys. He keep wait, trying to wake you up. But a lot of people, because of their hatred, which I don't understand the hatred, but they, they have such hatred for Floyd. They're not listening to the facts of what he's saying. And it's sad that these fighters are doing like this. And what is and what is boxing doing for him other than saying, well, if you want to make some money, lace the gloves up and get back in the ring at 54. Just saying. I know some 54-year-olds, some, some 50, some, I know some guys that are older than Roy that still can go because their bodies haven't been beaten up. You know, then they, but, it, you know, just saying, you could you could see, like, it, it, yeah, it is hard to watch, man. It was, you know, you saw Ali versus, you know, Larry Holmes. You know, you saw him versus Trevor Burbick. Roy Jones didn't get beat like that. You know, he just lost a decision. Like, you know, but just watching his performance is what I'm saying. Just seeing what he was and looking at him now, it was that same feeling of like, damn, like that shit's just hard to watch, man. Anyway, never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people, and I will catch y'all on the next video.